What's up, peeps? It's Miss Rebels. I have a really cool art activity for you guys to work on today. Um, the finished product, product is what you see in front of you, this really interesting flower art design with this like tie-dye color to it. Um, I'm going to show you how to work on that piece today. It's a really fun and interesting activity. It's really easy. You can do it by yourself. You can do it with your siblings or with your parents. Um, towards the end, once you're finished, this is what your product might look like. Um, it's really easy and it's really fun, so let's get started. The first thing that you're going to need is a piece of white paper. If you don't have paper without lines on it, that's fine. You can use notebook paper. You could use copy paper. Um, but ideally, you would have a piece of just plain Jane white paper. You're also going to need your pencil, a black permanent marker, an eraser. You can just use your pencil eraser. You are going to need some washable markers, so like a Crayola marker or any brand of marker that you have lying around your house, as long as the package says washable. You're also going to need a little sheet of tin foil and some water. I'm using water in a spray bottle. To start your drawing, you just need those three objects in front of you, your pencil, your Sharpie, and your eraser. You're always going to start your artwork in pencil first, and then go over those pencil lines in Sharpie. Before you start drawing, though, the first thing you need to do is write your name on the back of your paper, along with your class code, whatever your class code is. It's the first letter of your teacher's name, followed by your grade level number. So if you're in Miss Porterfield's first grade class, your class code is P1. To start our artwork, you are going to start by drawing a ground line. The ground line is going to show you where the sky and the ground meet and where they're different. So you're going to use your pencil first. You're going to be using a couple of elements of art to create this piece. You're going to be using the element of art line, shape, color, and space. You're going to be using lines to create the shapes of your flowers. You're going to be using shapes to create your actual flower petals. You're going to be using color at the end and space. Space is a ex really interesting element of art that shows us depth in our paint in our drawing. So like how far away something is or how close it is um, overlapping really helps to create the illusion of space. To start your drawing, you're just going to take your pencil and you're going to draw your ground line. You don't want your ground line to be right in the middle and you don't want it to be really high up at the top or really close to the bottom. You want a nice chunky ground. So find the middle of your paper, find the midpoint on your paper, and then find the midpoint between there and the bottom. So right about there is where your ground line is going to be, and you're going to make a straight line across your paper. You guys need to use your pencil lightly and use a light pressure. Draw light until you know it's right. Miss Revels is going to go ahead and go dark with my line so that you can see it because the camera is kind of hard to tell. <coughs> Excuse me. Once you draw your line across, now you can already start to see your garden taking place. The top part of your Above that line is going to be your sky, and the bottom part is going to be your ground. So you're going to be creating abstract flowers to make this piece of artwork. So you're going to need five different types of flowers um, using the different lines and shapes that I can show you. There's also going to be a picture um, download handout on your Google Sites that gives you some more examples of different types of flowers that you can use. But use your imagination. You guys are creative. I want to see what you guys can come up with. So you don't want to draw really tiny flowers in your artwork. You want to fill the space of the top. And you want to have enough space to add five. So to start your first flower, I'm going to start it up in that top corner. And I'm going to start by just drawing a circle. 
about the size of my thumb. Again, we don't want really teeny tiny little baby flowers. We want nice, full, luscious garden flowers for spring. I'm going to draw some lines sticking out around that flower. And then I'm going to add some little circles on the ends of those lines. So right now it looks like a sun, but it's not a sun. It's the start of one of our flowers. So I'm just adding those circles to the ends of those lines just to add some more variety to my flower. And I'm going to use those straight lines that I've drawn outside as the midpoint of my petal. So now I'm just going to go around each midpoint and draw a petal shape. You can do whatever kind of petal shape you like. I'm going with like a standard um, looking petal shape, almost like a teardrop. And you want to activate the edges of your paper. So if you at, if your flower starts to approach the edge of your paper, let it. Let your flower live off your paper. We've got such a luscious garden that our flowers are just overflowing and they just need to live off the paper and that's absolutely okay. It's gonna make your artwork look more interesting. So I'm just finishing adding those petals around and now I've got my first kind of abstract flower. We're not going to start drawing stems and leaves yet. We're going to go ahead and finish putting all of our flowers down first before we add those stems and leaves so that we can use that element of art of space and use overlapping to make it look like we have some flowers in front and some flowers behind, some are closer to the edge and some are farther away. So now I'm just going around the outside of those petals and tracing around. Again, just to add a little bit more interest to that flower. I'm gonna start my next flower over here, give myself some space, and I'm gonna start by just drawing circles. Start with a small circle and then a bigger circle around that and then a bigger circle around that until I have four circles. And now around the outside of that circle, I'm gonna draw some triangles. Again, we're using those shapes, those lines to create our shapes. Going around the outside, adding those really funky triangles. Now right now that's kind of a small flower. I want to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to go in between those triangles and add some more triangles. And I'm just going to keep adding triangles until I feel like my flower is big enough to be in my garden. I'm going to speed forward until all of my flowers are finished um, until I've finished drawing all of my flowers and then we'll get into how we are going to add our stems and our leaves. So now that my flowers are drawn in pencil first, the petals of my flowers, the next step that I'm going to want to do is to draw the stems. Now, when you draw your stems, you want them to come from the petal down past this ground line. So you're going to cross over the ground line. So for example, if I'm going to draw the stem for this first flower here, I might bring my stem, I'm going to do an interesting angle. I might want to fill this area here because there's kind of a white space. In art, we call this the negative space. So the negative space lives around these flowers. So to fill that negative space, I'm going to use um, placement of my stem to come down here. So my stem might come this way. Now when I reach another flower, instead of drawing through it, I'm going to pick up my pencil and move to the other side of that petal. Same thing with the next flower until I come all the way down into my ground line. And now that's going to give the illusion of the element of art space that we were talking about earlier. So I'm going to create two lines for my stems. Now I don't want really wide stems, but I also don't want just one line for my stem. So you want to create a thicker stem and then just erase where the ground line crosses over. I'm just going to continue adding stems to my flower. 
So once all of your petals and stems are drawn, the last step before we add Sharpie is to add your leaves. So each time you want to add a different style of leaf. So maybe for this flower here, since I've already got a cool split, maybe I'm just going to add one nice leaf here. Now again, I had to draw over my ground line, but I want to make it look like this leaf is in front of my ground line. So to do that, all I have to do is just erase the ground line that's in my leaf and then reinforce that line here drawing over it and it creates the illusion that one thing is in front of the other or it's overlapping. Alright, now I think that's a pretty good finishing place with my flowers. Um, I've got nice large flowers that take up some good space, no teeny tiny baby flowers. I've got variety in the difference of my flowers. I've got some negative space, lots of positive space, lots of interesting things happening, lots of overlapping. The next step is to take my black Sharpie or any black permanent marker that you have and to just trace over your pencil lines. I'm going to fast forward through this. Um, I'm going to speed through, um, so I'll see you on the other side. You need to take our pink eraser or your pencil eraser or whatever kind of eraser you have and erase all of your pencil lines. This is really important to make sure that your artwork has good craftsmanship. Good craftsmanship means that your artwork is neat, that you don't see any stray lines, like some lines I missed with my Sharpie. Um, you just want to go back and double check that all of those things are nice and tidy, and we'll just do that with our eraser. So I'm going to speed through this part as well, and I will see you back when we're time for color. We're going to learn about a really cool way to create kind of a tie-dye effect with your artwork that you can use on any piece of art in the future. It doesn't just have to be flowers. So you could draw anything in Sharpie. Any type of pattern or line design or landscape or whatever you want to draw as long as you have it um, outlined in Sharpie and then you can do this technique with tin foil washable markers and some water to create a really cool tie-dye effect so here are the three things you need for color you need washable markers I'm using these Crayola washables any type or any brand of marker that you have will work as long as it has the word washable on your package and it's important for them to be washable because that means that they will kind of melt if they get water on them so that's the reason we need washable not permanent colored markers you also need some tin foil doesn't have to be heavy duty any type of tin foil will work and then just some water. This is just a spray bottle um, that I've had lying around my house. You can use a spray bottle with just plain water or if you don't have a spray bottle you can use a cup of water, dip your hands in the water and kind of like flick the water towards the end and I'll show you where you can make that modification if you don't have the spray bottle handy. So the first thing you're going to do is take some tin foil and you might want to have your parents help you with this part because this part of your tin foil can be kind of sharp, the part of the box that helps you tear it. So you want to tear out enough tin foil and turn it over. See how there's a really, really shiny side and more of a dull side? Turn your tin foil over so that the dull side is facing up. And then you want to put your artwork face down on your tin foil. Your black permanent marker, you're going to trace around the outside the of next your step is to paper. decide whether or not you're going to be using warm colors or cool colors. Now your warm colors are over here, your red, orange, yellow, and peach, sometimes pink can be used as warm. These are the colors you would use if you were coloring in like a sun. On the other side are your cool colors. Your greens, blues, purples, black, brown, and gray are what's called neutral colors. So we're not going to be using neutral colors. We're just using warm or cool colors. I did warm colors 
the last time, the first time I did this project, I did a warm color scheme. So this time I'm going to choose cool colors. Now with this piece of artwork, I did kind of like a radiating color. So in the middle I started with red, then I went around with orange, then yellow, and then my pink in like a big circle. This time I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to choose my cool colors, so I've got this light green, this teal, this dark green, and this purple. And I'm going to do little color bursts all over my paper. So I'm just going to color right over my tin foil. So now that I've got color on my tin foil all inside of the little square that is the same size as my paper, the next step is to take my spray bottle and spray my tin foil so that the water starts to help the colors bleed together. You don't need too much water. That looks good. And you can already kind of see the colors are starting to kind of mix together. So now you're going to take your final piece. You're going to flip it over so that the back is facing up. And you're going to line your picture back up in that square that you drew. And just lay it down, face down into that color. And then you can just use your hands to kind of rub and make sure the whole paper is getting treated by the color. Okay. Once you're done with that, the last step is the most exciting step. It's the big reveal. You get to peel your paper back and see what you got. So to do that, you're going to hold your tinfoil down with one hand pick up a corner with the other and peel back and when you're finished you have a tie-dyed background. So for this art project we used lines, we used shape, shapes, and we also used color and the element of art of space which creates the illusion that some things are closer to the front than others by overlapping our shapes and our lines. To clean up, you can just fold this up, pass that away, or rinse it off and reuse it on another creative piece of artwork that you make. If you want your artwork to be on, if you want to share your artwork, you can send a picture. Ask your parents' permission first if you can take a picture of your pieces, piece of artwork to send to Miss Revels or Miss Brooks. Um, to our email addresses, and we will make sure that your beautiful champion artwork gets put up for the whole world to see on the Nursery Road Facebook page. I hope you guys enjoyed creating with me. I sure do miss you guys. I wish we were in the art room together, but this will have to do for now. We'll see you in the next video, champion.